Foot Clan, we are here with you this morning. A brand new show reflecting on a wild weekend where some people ended up moving on into their championship. And congratulations, it made your Christmas Day all the better. And some of you, like myself, ended up on the wrong end of some studs with some bad performances. We go through all of them today on the show. We get you ready for next week. Enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Whatever. (laughs) Monday, December 26th. Why are we here? I don't know. We're here for the people. For the people. For the people, Andy. I could have been nestled in my bed this morning. There's no one on the roads. Everyone else is nestled. There's a lot of nestling. I'm not nestling. What's the day after Christmas? You're snug in your bed and you're probably not listening. Instead, we drag Brooks in here to sit next to that big old bear, the B.O.B. Ayo. <laughs> and uh, nice Christmas, Brooks. Great Christmas. Nice yes. fantasy weekend. Great Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, and the, the epic uh, finale of our Dynasty League, Brooks v. Andy. Nobody's showing up. Brooks and I are both knocked out. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. This was uh, this was a tough one. I mean, Brooks and I both reflected alone in the office this morning on how nice it was to have Christmas as a distraction for our oh, that's great devastating defeats. That's good that it didn't like I yeah you know you, you have some people out there that I hope ha- had that attitude because I I feel like some people would Christmas was ruined. Because yeah. they didn't get in. Well, this I mean, was, whole, you, know, you know, a lot of people look, half the people didn't get in, half the people did. So, Merry Extra Christmas. Yeah. Well, it, it will be a fun final week. That is why we're here. We're here because of the 50% who made it through, who've got a lot to play for. And, um, and we're there for the other 50% as a cathartic, you just suffer with us as the ship sinks deep mm-hmm. into the ocean yes and i i think and maybe maybe i'm wrong i'd much rather be on the on the side of losing due to the other person's players going wild sure then i would like to be on what i think a lot of people feel this weekend which is losing because like this was not a good weekend for the start your studs crowd. oh yeah this was start your scrubs yeah when cam Akers is the the headliner what every year we get this stuff <laughs> Cam Akers is the headliner. Tyler Higby is the headliner (laughs) on the victory side. And the Devontae Adams and Stephon Diggs of the world. Yeah. I mean, uh, the Ramondres, the Aaron Jones. I mean, we're going to go through studs and duds today. But there there was pain. And there were a lot of those duds that were in matchups that you thought couldn't be a dud. Oh, yeah, like uh, the Denver Broncos defense. Oh, my gosh. Who are unbelievable. They're one of the best defenses in the National Football League, going up against the most depleted, shutdown version of an NFL franchise I can remember, starting Baker Mayfield, no center, no wide receivers, everyone gone. And they put up 51 points and destroy the uh, lock, rock-solid uh you know, absolutely perfect matchup. The the defense you were stashing for this week, barf. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Goodell, you may want to look into that game. Oh, from the Tankopotamus? I, I mean, Denver. I was, don't. I'm from all sides. I know that it doesn't make logical sense, but it was like their defense was a right-handed defense that all decided to play left-handed. Does that make any sense? Yeah, no, they I were. What you're saying. They yeah. were that. Inept that um, you didn't see. They actually did put their cleats on the opposite foot. Okay, for now that, that everyone's that shoes were pointing outward. <laughs> I think that really had an effect on the game. I think it did. I mean, my goodness, what a disaster! And uh, well, we uh, we took to Twitter as we always do, uh, and we yes. 
Wanted to get your reactions to the weekend, and uh, Mike, why don't you kick us off? Stefan Diggs, my grave. Oh, he did. <laughs> he did. Uh, and Aaron Jones in for the offseason. How about Tua turn the ball over? Oh, well, that's a good one. That's a good uh, one. TD Lamb. Oh, he did hey, something. some good stuff. And we're back. DeAndre Flopkins. Oh, Ramondre end my season, son. <laughs> oh, gross. What about TJ Rockinson? Oh, he was Gardner great. Winshew. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Boston Fields. Or Ignite with Flames, Connor. <laughs> and we're back again here. DeAndre hopping out into playoffs. <laughs> Scam night. Devon Turd Adams. And then my favorite pun of the week. Yes. I feel nothing inside. That's what a what an yeah. excellent pun. That was a uh, an actual submission. If yeah, if you are there, so I feel nothing inside. I mean, you're lucky. I've already moved. Amazing. Wow, you've you've the stages of grief. You're already. Uh, I'm, I'm all the way through. <laughs> wow, I'm he's, already he's scouting player. I'm already <laughs> 2023, baby. <laughs> 2023. The, uh, the, the ironic thing here is this is really, really cathartic. I yeah. get that for Andy. I feel like most of the people, this is the day after Christmas. Most people who are like, I got to go listen. They're prepping for this next week. They won. They're excited. Their players came through. Oh, so we need to focus on that side of things? <laughs> I'm just saying. Why don't you speak for a minute? Hey, I, I, I was happy enough to get through. I did not start the right quarterback. I went with Geno Smith, but uh, thankfully I had other players and, you made an incredible Sunday pivot that I thought was insane. Uh, you you put Devin Singletary into your lineup instead of Mike Evans. I when I saw it, I worried for you. I Wait. worried that that would be the difference. Wait, you're the one who guaranteed the touchdown. And now you, that is you, a problem. You pivoted away from Mike Evans. Also, I did start pivot. of the week, I did pivot away from Mike Evans Sunday morning. The yeah Sunday, Sunday morning, morning he, he made a. Did you put this out what? anywhere? Uh, you just I, kept it to yourself, I, didn't I, you? I, just, yeah, I mean, look. This wow. is a bit of a wow. This is not a like bit I of had, a thing that this will show up on Wikipedia as a controversy one this, day. Uh, it's not like Evans Gate. I, I had inside knowledge. I just took a close, close look, and uh, with the weather, why did you take one earlier in the week? <laughs> well, I mean, look, it was it was really part of this was the weather for uh, Devin Boston. Singletary. <laughs> it was it was me thinking they were going to run the ball a lot and that this would be, you know, a closer game. Devin Singletary would have his opportunities. And so this was as yeah. pro Devin Singletary as it was anything anti Mike Evans. That's the way to go. Yeah. But <laughs> obviously Mike Evans had a an anti Mike Evans game. Oh, actually, no, checking the stat log. It looks like he had another Mike Evans game. Because I don't hold it against him at all. No, it's, it's not, not his fault. No, he's. It's like DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins had an awful, awful game. Four yards. You go watch on ten, the on ten targets. On ten targets. We said. We said. Oh, he'll get nine, ten targets in this game. They're unfortunately that they'll be yeah. coming from. Uh, you know, Trace McSorley. Uh, Trace also McSorry. said that McSorley should not be on a football team. No, and oh my goodness, they he he should not. And they suck. But uh, you know, the Bucks, they done. Tom Brady is he is uh, expiring. The milk is getting yes, old. Oh, yes. You open that top of that; it's not a good whiff. Mm -mm, and mm -mm. they they're going to make the playoffs. Oh, they're still pouring that milk into the bowl, and it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Did you smell that milk? <laughs> this, you don't want to eat this cereal. Her plop goes the curdles. What, what happens if you face a team that can guard Leonard Fournette out of the backfield? Mm, yeah. What does he do? What so, choice does he have with the ball? I feel like every play is. I have to throw it into the flat to a running back or or Kate Otten six inches from the line of scrimmage. The the teams aren't guarding against that because it it it's awful offense. I mean, it, <laughs> you have to is, do so much all the way down the field. Yeah, exactly. This is like, oh, dude, he's gonna do it again. He's gonna dump it off in the flat again. Check this out. Just let him do it and then tackle him for about three yards. It's it's embarrassing to watch and it it nullifies Evans. Uh, you know. It nullifies Evans, and then Godwin isn't quite himself yet, at least by his own admission. And so he – did you see something? Like he has 80 – he has mid-80s on receptions on the year. Godwin, you, yeah, he's been a PPR machine. But do, do you know that 50-plus of those, it's like 53, are screen passes? 53 of 80-something I mean, he caught, are screens. He caught eight passes yesterday on 10 targets and that turned into 63 yards i i would rather watch the denver broncos <laughs>
the Denver Broncos offense is a more enjoyable game because I cannot continue to watch purposeful, successful ish, just screen, screen, throw it one yard, throw it one yard, throw it behind the line it's of scrimmage. The, it's not fun to it watch. It is awful. At least with the Broncos, <clears throat> they get three plays, then the other team gets the ball. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes fewer than three. That's true. That's true. They, they can turn it over on How that first one. How bad is Russell Wilson? Dude, it, is, it, he the worst, is he the worst quarterback in football? In NFL history. Uh, the Like legitimately as a guaranteed starter category. Not the Tyler Huntleys of the world or the whatever. Right. But as a guaranteed starter, is he the worst quarterback? In the NFL right now, absolutely. There's no like legitimate you know not not even franchise quarterback but like this is our quarterback that is worse than he was really rooting for zach wilson to earn that job yeah he was i mean it will be one of the unsolved mysteries we will get into life. stud so we'll be talking about a lot of positive performances get you ready for your championship week but some news news and notes from around the league presented by usaa insurance Jason might win a title, but it will not be without adversity. Yeah. His quarterback, he survived. Now we have a couple of other players that are going to directly impact him and your teams. Christian Watson exited with a hip injury, did not return to the game. Yeah, uh, he knew. I mean, there's video of him on the sideline early when people weren't sure. He's like, yeah, I'm not coming back in. So that it does not bode well with the, you know, if it's a hip flexor, whether or not he could play next week. Uh, is dicey and I need him because we just talked about I have Mike Evans so uh, thankfully oh you could be one of those guys that has to play Mike Evans <laughs> yeah that's not good I would be one of the few in the championship that, that gets to play Mike Evans thankfully I have the Yeti uh well let's talk about that oh uh, what <laughs> so very interesting information uh finding this out this morning we want to bring it to you because I don't know Derrick Henry's he was my fantasy MVP he's been Pretty great. And he's been awesome. He's gotten a lot of people to championships, myself included. And what's the situation, Mike, with the Tennessee Titans playoff scenarios? Well, the, the, the playoff scenario is the winner of the Titans-Jaguars game uh, next week. That will be the person who wins the AFC South. So this coming week. So th this nope. week has no implication for the Tennessee Titans. Let's be clear there. Yeah, so Since we still got a Monday Night Football game, you're talking about... Yeah. The, oh, yes. Week Sorry. Eighteen. Eighteen. Yes. Week seventeen, aka your your championship week, does not factor into what the Tennessee Titans are doing for their NFL. So season. they lose that game. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Correct. Actually, it does matter because now they get a better pick. Should they end up losing <laughs> oh, in week man. eighteen? That's right some, now, that's some chess. Right now, they're sitting at pick thirteen. If and 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 outside of the playoffs, if they were to start today, okay. they can improve. If they lose next week, like let, let's fast forward two weeks from now. They lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars, so they're not in the playoffs. If they actually lose this game in between now and then, they've got a really good pick. They've lost, what is that, six, seven in a row to finish the season, and they get a good pick going forward. So that's that's the best case scenario for them as a franchise is if they lose this week. Right. It Because if they win, it doesn't do anything. It does it, All it can do is affect their draft pick negatively if they lose that game against Jacksonville. Um, so I don't know what will happen, um, whether or not they will rest starters this coming week. It's or, possible. Or take it easy. I mean, you... you 319 you, carries on Derrick Henry's body so far this year. Yeah, the worst thing you could do for, for your playoff hopes is injured Derrick Henry this coming week when you need him stored up and ready to go and to to beat the Jacksonville Jaguars in week 18. So yeah, I could see them I could see them resting him. The only hope that I have is the fact that Ryan Tannehill, he went and got a surgery quietly here uh this last week with specific hopes that the timeline would allow him to be back for week 18. Should he not be able to be back week 18 and it's looking dicey the last thing I they, saw They basically said he cannot. Exactly. The last thing I saw was that he's not going to be able to make it back during the regular season. It would be the playoffs that's now. That's right. If that's the case, look, Malik Willis is uh, not good. You're going to have to beat the Jags with Malik Willis, which means you need to go out there and practice trying to win a game with Malik Willis. I Get agree. your offense working. I agree. 
So that is my hope. Uh, Eric Henry sat out in 2019 against the Saints when the game had no impact on the sta standings. Uh, I didn't look back and see if that it, was just the final week of the year. It was week uh, – let me – I had just looked at it, and he was out with a – hamstring was the designation that he had. Week. Yeah, but so 2019, it was, in fact, uh, your championship week 16. If I'm Tennessee – Back back when it which, was Which, by the way, 16. they lost to Houston. If I'm Tennessee, I need to get it going. Genuinely. Like, this is not just – Sure. This is not just, you know, like trying to talk up the Derrick Henry managers – if it's, I'm the head Frable coach, should play. If I'm the head coach, I've lost a bunch of games in a row. I have to get it going with Malik. I have to give him more reps and more opportunities. I don't know if that means you have to give Derrick Henry his normal workload. That's the concern. So for me. it's something we're going to have to watch and and pay attention to the beat reporters around Tennessee because unfortunately, this week doesn't matter to Tennessee. If I don't have Jalen Hurts and Christian Watson and Derrick Henry, <laughs> I'm going to have a bad week. Yes, Jason's Monday next week may wow. feel, feel bad. Uh, Jamal Williams, leg injury, did not return. I saw him uh, limp off the field on that one. Doesn't matter. DeAndre Swift still can't do anything. Yeah, what? Oh. Join, join me. Join me in my hatred. The Patriots, tight end Hunter Henry exited. John New Smith ex exited. Greg Dulcich exited, did not return, was ruled out immediately. He, Hamstring he, injury. He caught a touchdown first. Though. He did. He did. Uh, Marquise Goodwin. That was it, was, it was bad. It was bad yeah. if you started Marquise Goodwin. Um, he exited, did not return, was a goose. The Eagles were unable well, to. But also Travis Homer, who is back on the team. Who's on the team? Never left. He never left. Just, just misreported. Just reportedly was, was waived by the team. But now he unfortunately suffered an ankle sprain. Eagles uh, did not win, therefore they did not clinch the number one seed. The Vikings did win, which helps that narrative. So Jalen Hurts could push to play in Week 17 against the New Orleans Saints. Yes, come on, buddy. So that, that game, man, that Eagles Cowboy game was insanity. It was all over the place. Taylor Heineke was benched for Carson Wentz. <laughs> I'm back on top in our Carson Woods versus Matt Ryan bet. Who's out of the NFL first? The best, most fun snip, bet of snap, all time. Snip, snap, snip, snap, snip, snap. I, I mean, yes. Like you would think in in the in the type of a bet of whose career is uh, like who's out of the NFL first of Matt Ryan versus Carson Wentz. You you want your guy starting, but I think that the more that Carson Wentz starts, the more or the sooner. That he is out of the NFL. Right. I, I was done a blessing by having him not be seen. He's like, shh, shh, shh just forget. Just forget the last time you saw if him. If they can blend in as a backup, you can last a long time. Yeah. Just ask Chase Daniel. Um, but good news. The commanders are going to decide on a starter by Wednesday at the latest. So we'll find that out. Today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. <laughs> Studs of the Week, presented by Madewell. There so, are some. So believe it or not, yeah, as you say, there there were good performances this week, including quarterbacks Dak Prescott, Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, and my goodness, saving himself over the last two drives of the game. A disaster game for Josh Allen turned into a respectable enough game Yeah, because inexplicably they went for it on fourth and three and threw a touchdown on the last play of the game basically yeah and uh, Gardner let's throw Gardner in there though yeah. some good performances at quarterback the quarter the two quarterbacks I want to talk about first is Jared Goff he was someone that uh, you know yeah. he's, he's had a lot of big games we kind of recommended him over most of the streaming options talking about you know what uh, the the guys I was having to pick up a play uh wishing I could have Jared Goff on my roster thankfully he goes out there has a great game it's i mean didn't you're, start that way you're pretty you're pretty sad with the pass catchers uh for detroit which doesn't make sense when you have 355 and three touchdowns but uh, all three touchdowns went to zilstra so yeah that that part sucked but jared goff had a great game the other quarterback i want to talk about this is personal i am terrified of joe burrow who is Playing great, has great weapons. For 52. Do they even need a running back? 52 passing attempts, another couple of touchdowns, you know, three touchdowns in this game, four touchdowns the week prior. And next week, it's him 
v Josh Allen sure in a championship matchup that like when you, when you were playing Best Ball Mania 3 and you're in the the off season and you're targeting you know in draft season the week 17 matchups to target that you want a Bengals you want a Bills because of this game and of course I'm playing against them next week if yeah well Burrow's looking great that I was going to say the, the if you played Burrow mm -hmm. this weekend you're actually like you, you should be really, really happy that he's up here in this list. But it was three touchdowns, I believe, in the first quarter, and he ended the game with three touchdowns. Joe Burrow and the Bengals are kind of magma right now, heading into the playoffs. Somebody was asking me over the Christmas uh, day. You know, you see your family. They say, "Who's your Super Bowl picks?" It's tough. I mean, the Bengals are right there with the Bills and the Chiefs. In the AFC. Yeah, they look great. And, um, you know, he's now second in MVP odds. And when you throw the ball 52 times and you complete 40 passes, it's really impressive. So um, your hope if you're facing Joe Burrow next week is that you get a kind of, you know, there's always the chance that Buffalo steps up. Their defense has the ability to do that, but you're meeting uh, the Bengals where they're, they're playing very I, well. I guess the nice thing, so <clears throat> as of right now, I'm in two championship matchups. Mike and I are Dino Junior team. We talk about the team of destiny. Yes. Our, our back to back championship team. We are in uh in in Dino Junior. We have Joe Burrow there. <laughs> so yeah, that feels good. So hopefully Joe Burrow uh, does enough uh either direction to <laughs> just win me one, baby. <laughs> Running back studs Cam Akers against the Denver defense. <laughs> I don't. You know, you you might have played him twenty three for one eighteen and three, and unbelievable. And um, that game last night, it swung some matchups in ways that were inexplicable. We yes. had we had uh, one matchup where the defenses faced each other, and the Rams scored twenty one points, and the Broncos scored negative four, and it won the game for the Rams manager by less than a point. Yeah, and that one. Can you like, imagine going into that game saying, "I have a chance"? Yeah, you that, don't have a chance. Oh, you did have a chance. That one at least, like, can make rational sense to me. Of you're going to play the defense against Russell Wilson and his offense because they stink. The one though that we saw that was the manager that lost had the Denver Broncos with negative points, and on the other side was Tyler freaking Higby. It was a thirty point swing to lose the matchup. Like. And by less than a point. By less, by than, less a than a point. point. Like that was that was the worst one I've seen of the season. That to even start Tyler Higby this week against the Broncos with Baker, and then have it end up like that was. I mean, that was just what like, is that? You, you have to vomit. You go into the matchup up twenty nine with the Denver defense <laughs> against Tyler I mean, Higby. Yeah, that's a that's a one hundred percent. You bought the banner. You yes, you bought you the did. trophy. You you are wearing the Woo. robe. Disgusting. Shocking. Um but Cam Akers, uh yeah. you know, monster and, week against he, Denver like, Chargers next week. You got to keep playing him. He looked he looked much better than he's looked all year. Saquon you got yeah, you have a weekend with Deonta Foreman. Dude. Oh, and Cam Akers. Deonta Foreman. It's Team Achilles weekend. Yeah, and and uh Chuba Hubbard uh, next to Deontay Foreman had all of a sudden Detroit who has oh I know shut I know. down every running back they're the number one on the season you start this game and I think I I blinked twice and they had 150 rushing yards yeah I I I really I don't remember if that was in the first quarter or not it was very very quick but yes. it's unbelievable they chunk run after chunk run could not stop the run like Foreman after I mean, if you made it through last week playing Foreman when he scored essentially one to negative points, and like he was a full bench for me. So of course this is this is where we go. One hundred and sixty five and a touchdown, and it didn't even look uh, like it was oh his gosh. game. It looked like it was Chuba's game. Yeah, yeah. I I benched uh I I benched Foreman in the Megalo Bowl League where had I actually played him without my quarterback, I could have gone to the next round. But there's there's a uh, foreman on the bench. Yep. Saquon Barkley, fourteen for eighty four in one, ten okay. targets. You love to see that. James yep. Connor. Uh, I'll say this on a team that is spiraling the drain. 
Week in and week out, James Conner runs harder than any running back in football. 15 for 79 and 1. There Eight targets, 7 for 41. There was no play in the entire game that the Tampa Bay defense didn't expect James Conner to get the football, and he still had a really good week. He has Atlanta next week. He could be a linchpin for championship teams. Absolutely. I mean, we, you know. And it, you could get Cole McCoy back to move the offense. For sure. Uh, James Conner will be a, a, a league winner. I mean, I can't imagine. With his utilization, it really doesn't even matter whether Against he's. the Falcons a, next week? Yeah, whether he's efficient or, or you can have a touchdownless game, which seems like a realistic outcome for the Arizona Cardinals, where he still has a good fantasy output because he's on the field every single play. He's involved in the passing game. He's he, the running back four since week 10, despite Arizona's struggles. Yeah, because he's, he's on the field literally 90-plus <laughs> percent of snaps. He's one of – And he well, looks good. I'm I, Like, watching him play, this is the best I've seen James Conner in a long time. Yeah, I, like I think last, – Sorry, last year he was a touchdown-centered running back who still – I mean, he still looked good. But I, he's just winning at the point of, you know – contact every play he goes forward an extra three or four yards I think physically he looks incredible his his vision to me has been questionable at times running into uh the back of Lyman's like he he's making it harder on himself frequently but that it's not stopping him but he is he he's going to be such a brutal player because like you know it, in in places that you drafted James Connor the beginning of the year was so bad you're like week one running back 17 then after that outside of the top 25 for four straight weeks misses three games and by then like was James Conner really part of your plan did you move on so it, that'll be it, that'll be a, a a uh a tough one for a lot of fantasy managers uh Leonard Fournette turned into the dump truck again nine for 90 20 carries dominated the work Rashad White got into the end zone, so if you played him, you got bailed out there. Mm -hmm. But Fournette seems to be taking the majority of those snaps. Devin so, Singletary had the big game, 12 for 106. Alvin Kamara, we can talk about that game too. Oh. <laughs> Which was just <laughs> Nick Chubb and Alvin Kamara exchanging handoffs. Yeah, I, w I was actually pleasantly surprised uh, by the, the amount that Amari Cooper was able to yeah. To do in a game where, you know, you benched all receivers outside of uh, that single play. I mean, it really was just a running game because the weather was frightful. What a week. James Cook, 11 for 99 and a touchdown. So it wasn't just Singletary. Uh, they both ran for uh, basically 100 yards. They both scored a touchdown. They both had uh, some targets. Not a lot, but just was a good yep. situation for them. Uh, they bring a little something different to the offense, each sure. of them. Uh, I think that's why you've seen so little Naeem Hines is you're, you're getting the compliment between the two of them. And then Derrick Henry, of course. I mean, this is almost disappointing for the way that... Honestly, with, with, with the huge touchdown at the very beginning of the game, uh, what was 40-something, 40 46, I don't recall, but it was right at the beginning. And then to end with 23 for 126 and 1, it feels a little bit disappointing, but still great yeah. game. He didn't have 200, Yeah, he didn't have two, and this was the yeah, Houston come Texans. On. Come on, he didn't win. They lost. Yeah. Houston's third straight game of like going out there and competing. Seriously. Brandon Cooks with the big game. Um, quick break, and then we'll get into it. Houston ruined the palindrome. I know. I know. <laughs> they need to tie this week. Redeem themselves. Wait, how would a tie help? Well, because they would be two. Whatever uh, two the wins, is. Whatever oh, the losses is, and oh, then a tie. Yeah. So two ties. No, it, it pretty much makes sense. All right, let's talk about the good at the wide receiver position. Gardner Minshew couldn't slow him down. Devontae Smith, 12 targets, 8 for 113 and 2. Uh, big games for A.J. Yeah. Brown and Devontae Smith despite despite the loss of Jalen Hurts. Well, the, you know, the nice thing for the wide receivers, if it is Gardner Minshew, is obviously Gardner Minshew is not running for 100 yards on the ground. Those – uh, yards, if they need to come, if they can't come through the offense, are going to go to the wide receivers. And Devon Smith's been on fire. Uh, he's averaging over 100 yards and a touchdown a, a, a game over this last month and uh, is currently the wide receiver 10. Phenomenal season. And he was, I mean, he was the guy that looked like Gardner favored 
which is, I mean, you know, you see this when there's a change of quarterback. Sometimes they just have a certain connection with the way that a certain player plays, and it was Devontae Smith this week. 20 targets between A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Smith with 12 of them. C.D. Lamb and Justin Jefferson, they were studs that delivered in week uh, 16. Justin Jefferson, new record, broke Randy Moss's franchise record for receiving yardage. He is unstoppable. I don't know if you saw his comments before the game. I did not. Compared himself to basically like Michael Jordan going up against the Pistons when the Pistons were so physical with him and how he expects it and he expects teams to be physical and it doesn't matter because he's Justin Jefferson. <laughs> okay. I <laughs> love it. He needs 209 more yards to break Calvin Johnson's record. He has two weeks to do it. I expect that will get done. A little done. cheap. Uh, a little cheap for sure because he's got the extra game. Yeah. But uh, I yeah. think – yeah, that's just not fair. I, it is I not agree. fair, but it will happen. He will have the record. So, Justin, if you're listening, take the cheapness away. 209 yeah, just, this week. Yeah. Get it done. Then the, the haters can't hate. You, you're, you're, the, the record, you're so concerned I'm about I'm concerned the about the record. This has nothing to do with your beautiful body on my fantasy football team. C.D. Lamb, the wide receiver, six on the year. He's delivered in a big way. Juicy matchup. Uh, coming up against Tennessee, Jalen Waddle, two straight weeks, two big plays in a row. Wide receiver seven on the year. Uh, he went for one forty three and one, an eighty something yard touchdown, eighty four yard touchdown in this one, mm -hmm. and uh, wow. he's always one big play away. Say so all the while, his uh, quarterback just fully melted down in the second half. I mean, and Tyreek a big game too. The well. Yeah, I mean, the, because these wide receivers are awesome. That's that's the justification for Tua is any play can be an 80-yard touchdown. And they happen. But when you throw – what do you have, four, three picks I or think four picks? Three. three. Three interceptions. That's that's crazy. Yeah, they, they blew it. They had a big big, time. big lead, right? Yes. Uh, was it 20 to 6 at one point? Something I can't like recall. That. But it was, it was a big lead, and it was just, I mean, a – Awful, awful second half. As expected, DJ Moore, nice game. Hey, there you he know, is. Sa Sam Darnold was all right. Like he was the uh, the stream of the week. It was the disgusting. Don't look at yep, it. Stream of the week, but sure. he had what two touchdown passes, and uh, I think he had at least two. I don't have them pulled up. And oh, I'm, he had a rushing touchdown. So that's go. what it is. And I believe that if the Panthers win out. They will be hosting a playoff game. Look, I, I hope it happens. <laughs> Probably the Dallas Cowboys. I genuinely think they're, <laughs> I, I think they're a better football team than the Buccaneers. Yes. They don't have the better quarterback, um, but I think they're the better football team. And, and if you want proof, this is not the first time that we've seen them impose their will in the running game against a defense that's pretty good. Like They did this to Seattle. Where, and, and Seattle's not as good of a defense as, as they faced on the against the run as the Lions are. But it was about like you remember the Seattle game where they just ran it and then yes. they ran it and then they ran it and yep. nobody could stop them and then they'd run it some more. It, like it's actually to the point of impressive to me where their offensive line is moving people wherever they want to move them and saying, "Yeah, we're going to win the game." It's a very high T uh, very game. They're playing. Hey, we're going to run the ball. That's our play call. You try to stop it's us. Just, they, it's just so funny that they they got rid of their running back to do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They, Christian they're, McCaffrey. They're you ever so heard of him? much better without Christian McCaffrey, and I only mean that in wins and losses, which is crazy. Um, it might also have something to do I, I with getting Matt rid of Rule. Matt Ja Rule. <laughs> yeah. Um, Steve Wilkes is a good coach. He got a raw deal in Arizona. Now this next week is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are hosting the Carolina Panthers, so yeah, that will be a really game. interesting, big, important game. That I uh, let me tell you how it's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to tell you the game right now. Okay, okay let's the, hear it. The game is going to go like this: the Carol. It's going to be two bad offenses, two good defenses, low scoring. The Carolina Panthers are going to be the better team. They will be the team that is about to win the game <laughs> until the very, very end when some lucky turnover gets the ball in Tom Brady's hands with only he, 20 yards on the drive. Exactly, he comes back, he wins the game. Tampa Bay is hosting a playoff game that they will be exiting from quickly. It's wild. It's wild. Um, T. Higgins, big game, 8 for 128 and 1. Of course. And then, uh, look, we we talked about it. He was in my DraftKings lineup. Jahan Dotson, 9 targets, 6 for 76 yeah. and 1. 
Superior talent wins out. He is good. And he's a real and he, he had a couple plays he left on the field and he was he still had a big game. Um Yeah, he's 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 a really, really solid wide receiver. If people aren't paying attention at the end of the year and you're in dynasty or keeper leagues, Dotson is he's got a very bright future ahead of him. Also, if you they have a quarterback, that'd be good. Yeah, I mean, they, they don't have a quarterback now, and he's getting it done. So, you know, hopefully Arrow can only go up. But we've said that forever with DJ Moore. And if franchises have shown us something, it's it's not easy to get a quarterback, no matter how many you bring in. Um, also, you skipped Jacoby Myers. Had a great game. <laughs> great game, 6 for 83 and 1. <laughs> if, if, if you played Jacoby Myers, oh, brother, did you get bailed out. Yeah. I mean, he... Got a bomb touchdown uh, that basically is this entire uh, stat line, except it wasn't him. It, was, it wasn't thrown to him. No, it was not thrown to him. Uh, it bounced up in the air, and then he came down with the touchdown. It was just like, um, who who got the, oh, Traylon Burks' touchdown after yeah. the Derrick Henry run. It was not his play, but he certainly got all of the stats for it. TJ Hawkinson, George Kittle. Hawkinson was 16 targets, 13 for 102, or sorry, 13 for 109 and two. He was this week's KJ Osborne, which is why we said don't buy the KJ Osborne hype, but Hawkinson, monster performance. George Kittle as well, two touchdowns. Kittle looks vintage right now, soaking up the, like he looks like Kelsey in the middle of the field right now. Yeah. It's really funny that there is no problem with George Kittle. There's there's been none. He hasn't lost anything he didn't when he was sucking. It was just a matter of oh, we don't need him. That's all you know, this often so weird. Well, but they didn't. I mean, they were still winning games. Debo Samuel was getting it done. Brandon Ayuk was getting it done. That's one of the one of the issues with this offense is like, just you have an elite you have an elite tight end who can do these things. There's very few tight ends in the league that can put up that stat line on eight targets. One and of them is Tyler Higby. <laughs> <laughs> sure, fair enough. But like, w I get. Oh, we don't need it. But it's it's so bizarre to have your game plan not feature George Kittle. So strange. Yeah, Higby. Nobody played him. Well, yeah. except for that one guy. <laughs> that one guy. I, I mean, th this was just not a predictable week of any kind. If you playing Tyler Higby with Baker Mayfield against Denver was not a thing. Logic said to do Tyler. Higby exists only to hurt our listeners. That our yes, our listeners yes. would never have played Tyler Higby, and would only have accidentally gone up against Tyler Higby. And so I apologize to our audience for what Higby did to you. I saw I saw a listener, and this just gives you just incredible credit for just going with your gut. I don't know how you did it. I don't know what book you read that gave you the courage. But I saw somebody that benched Ramondre Stevenson okay. to play Deontay Foreman. Wow. And Stevenson, wow. you, you had Damian Harris ruled out again, Stevenson coming off career high in rushing yardage. Deontay Foreman coming off a one-point game going against the number one rushing defense in football. And that's an incredible call, and I wish you would have texted me <laughs> why you did it beforehand. <laughs> But this is, you know, we're trying to give you information, and you got to go with what you think your team needs. Yeah. Tyler Higby had eight receptions in the previous four weeks combined. He's averaging two catches a game. Goes up against Denver. Well, this was the, uh, what, they lost Ben Skoranek. They had already lost Allen Robinson. They had already lost Cooper Cup. We're finally out of options enough to get Higby the ball. I guess. Evan Ingram, of course, the yeah, big baby. game on Thursday night. Travis Kelsey, another boring 113. An another super disappointing Travis Kelsey game. Uh, we've got him in the Dino Junior League, and it's just like six for 113. Come on, Kelsey, where's your touchdowns? And part of my defeat came at the hands of Taysom Hill, nine for 56 and one on the ground. Oh, yeah. I mean, tight starting tight end, zero targets. I was uh, – my opponent had Taysom Hill, took him out of his lineup. I was thrilled. I did not want to face sure. Taysom Hill. I did. I just thought this was inevitable. This game had, it was running, 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 and I ended up facing three players from a running game. It was it was too much to overcome. Dawson Knox got back in the end zone, 
and Pat Fryermuth, seven for sixty six, got it done enough in PPR yeah. Thanks, to Pat. make you happy. Well, I mean, he was dealing with a foot issue, and you know, we saw this. He was limited in practice two weeks ago. This last week, brought it up on the show. Full participant all week in practice. Yeah. Wasn't listed with the foot issue at all on the injury report. So it was nice and, to see him and back. His up. buddy Kenny Pickett was back. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was. Incredibly, the studs of the week presented by Madewell. Don't wait to upgrade your denim game. Go to Madewell.com today and get twenty dollars off your next pair of jeans. Use the code Footballers twenty. Let me I, uh, use some of that uh, the Christmas money. Yeah, get yourself go, some denim. The I had a question for you guys. Yeah, just real quick. T.J. Hawkinson, since he's been traded to the Minnesota Vikings, he is averaging nine targets a game. Now, I mean, there's some there. There's of course a couple duds in there, but where? Like in your, just in your head, you know, trying to think towards next year because we're always looking at next year. Is Hawkinson feeling like the the like the tight end three? Probably the tight end four, but may, may, Who would you maybe put the tight end three. No, I mean, he, I, he's not the four for me either. Well, well I I think he maybe I don't know maybe. how he would fall below that, but I mean you've so got who are you talking about? You've got no, Kelsey that's, that's there. Probably fair. You've got Kelsey and you've got Andrews. Andrews yeah. I know Andrews has obviously had a bad time, but Lamar's been gone and he's been banged up. So those two will be one and two. Then you've got George Kittle if he continues this this hot streak that could be there. Goddard Goddard would be Goddard could in strong be there. contention over Hawkinson. Okay. Waller but, will be talked about again. Oh, I would not do that. Oh, I can't wait to hear Kyle Pitts and the reasons <laughs> he's going to be. He should be the tight end three. Um, <laughs> but the reality Th those, is. Those will be there if oh, they sure. end up drafting a top tier quarterback or something, trading up and getting one. The, uh, you know, but Adam Thielen is on his way out. Bringing TJ Hawkinson into this offense, he'll. I'll, I think I'll four, bet four is he, fair, five's fair. Three is fair. So somewhere in that range. Three, four, five, okay. I think, is his range. Okay. Shall we move on? Yes. Pooped in his big boy pants. I uh, I feel like we've spent uh, uh, enough time talking about the negative performances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blitz these at each position. You guys just pull out a couple names that you think are significant to talk about heading into championship week. Let's not focus on the past. Let's focus on the future. Um, you did have uh, bad games from Justin Fields. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, it, same old Aaron Rodgers right now, one touchdown. Geno Smith yeah. didn't have enough weapons. Tom Brady is, ugh. and then Russ, Derek Carr. Tua, Tua was 310 and one, but three picks. Yeah, Tua's the one that I think is probably the most important because he's got the weapons he's a good starter he's he was on fire for a part of this year and i i think he you you've got to you've got to stay with this trend and and not look his way he's playing against new england uh in new england and you know we've got five games in a row of of mediocrity yeah since the bye week he is averaging 14.2 fantasy points a game by the way new england no top 12 finishes I, it's worth saying new england is super cursed right now like super cursed like these these games are wild. Like Ramondre is responsible in part for two defeats, but yeah. they missed two field goals or sorry, two extra points in this game. They're down four going at the five yard line. If they make one of those Right. If they make two it. of those, they're they're just playing for a field goal. They're losing the game at the end of every week. I they're just cursed. Yeah, I mean I think the list of the dud quarterbacks this week is a list of quarterbacks that you cannot start next week. Tua, Rodgers, Geno against the Jets. Yeah. Brady sucks. Russell Wilson, don't do it. I don't care the Kansas City matchup. <laughs> the only quarterback that you want to play next week is Justin Fields. Yes. We've got to make sure he's not too banged up. I know he got a few uh, injuries in that game, but going to the uh, controlled environment in Detroit, where Detroit's offense is going to play great, Justin Fields will be the, awesome. But the, the injuries do need to be monitored. Yeah. Or Justin Fields. He was talking like he can barely put weight on a foot and things like he's the fact really that you said a list up. of injuries. Yeah. And that's happening every week. Running backs, there were some huge letdowns. Ramondre Stevenson, thirteen for thirty, two catches for three yards and a fumble. Gone are the days where Stevenson was <laughs> hyper targeted in the what passing happened? game for some reason. What happened there? 
And uh, Brooks, I mean, what happened to your guy, Josh Jacobs? 15 for 44. Yeah, Brooks, your guy. Letting everybody down. <laughs> yeah, Come what, on, what's Josh. What's going on, Josh? <laughs> All I know is I hope it happens one more week. Well, San Francisco is going to make it easier for that to happen. Aaron Jones, banged up, 6 for 25, terrible game. DeAndre Swift, what are they doing? 4 for 12 on the ground, 1 for 13 through the air. Putrid. Getting those snaps, though. Putrid bust. Literally, he gives me, I don't know, anything else, and I'm – I'm doing fine in DFS. But Let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm looking through the stat sheet here. I think, yeah, it looks like his highest snap share since week one. This past week? Yeah. Yeah, well, Jamal Williams is hurt. So him against Chicago next week is going to be a topic of conversation mm -hmm. heading into the weekend. So, so I can tell you exactly what I'm going to do. You're going to play him. I'm 100% going to play him. Yeah. He's going to have a good fantasy game. Yeah. If he, you got there with Swift, which he, you probably did. He didn't, will not. He will. <laughs> he will might not. just say he will not. <laughs> uh, Miles Sanders, 21 for 65, but you know, didn't score, didn't catch any passes. That's a bad week. Had the game just game game losing fumble. JK Dobbins, 12 for 59, no Dude. no end zone, no targets. They they went disappointing. They went essentially 50-50 with Dobbins cuz I think Gus Edwards was like 11 for 100 or something. This was crazy disappointing that uh, that he didn't get in the end zone, that Gus was doubling essentially his yards per carry. Just really, really upsetting in that matchup. Cordero Patterson, 8 for 17, did nothing. Yeah, but it's like, because on the other side, you know, he wasn't in the in the studs list at all. But, dude, Tyler Algier has been playing very I'm trying to pull up his, his I was, numbers really I was quick. good with them this week. I was good with playing Algier? him against Baltimore. Yeah, I, I felt like they're just so committed to the run, and he's playing so well. He had the ball in his hands all game long. Yeah, I mean, he is on the season. He's at 4.9. Like, he's... They're very, very Carolina esque, he's, he's, where they're willing to. These middling running backs look great in these offense. Just in the offense, eighteen for seventy four. Just saying, like uh, on the like, it's. I feel like that the 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 Atlanta Falcons team is kind of overshadowing what Algier is doing here at the end of the season. Yeah, you talk about some scary potential starts for Week Seventeen. I don't know how you do it, but Zonovan Knight, oh, man. six for negative two, and then Raheem Mostert. Mostert had the first three carries of the game, went for 33 yards. Ended the game, 8 for 45, had a fumble. The goal line carry went to Jeff Wilson in this More game. More work went to Jeff Wilson. We were back to this. And uh, he's he's going to be a, a almost a non-start in New England. Like, just a terrifying... You need, basically, a monster run from Raheem Mostert. It's a lot like old-school C.J. Spiller, where sure. if you don't get the one run... You don't get any fun. It's a disaster. It, it reminds me so much of, and it's so ironic, the San Francisco 49ers with these running backs. Like <laughs> last year sure. when they when they had McDaniel and Raheem Moster and Jeff Wilson, there is, there's gold in them hills in the running game. But as a fantasy manager trying to figure out which guy it's going to be and why and who gets the work? It it it's so frustrating. Where if you draft, you know, team rushing attack, if that's how your league works, great. The Dolphins are great. They're going to score a lot of points on the ground, but you just can't really predict how it's going to, you know, what method, what running back uh, is going to get the opportunities. Latavius Murray is going to be a nervous start next week too. If you take a chance on him against Kansas City, mm -hmm. uh, the floor fell out. Wide receiver duds, Devontae Adams, two oh, for 15. Man. Stephon Diggs, two for 26. DeAndre Hopkins, one for 40. Those are three one of the for most. Four. Sorry, what did I say? One for 40. I wish. Yeah, if you got one for 40, you'd be pretty happy. <laughs> I mean, and you're talking about nine targets for Adams and 10 for Hopkins. Three bona fide locks at the position that you start no matter what that disintegrated your week. Yeah, it's, I mean, at least with Diggs, there was some excuse um obviously uh, Hopkins the has weather. the quarterback excuse the weather excuse we we, we knew that it's gonna be very difficult to have any kind of deep passing um and uh, you know they they ran the ball so much in Buffalo Devontae Adams is the one that man to to have nine targets and not have the weather be such that it should have affected it was cold but I mean Fryermuth got it done Pickett got it done you know the, these guys uh Hide your photographers. Right. Yeah, he's going to be very, very uh, displeased. 
Not like we have to. I mean, he's got like a uh, Mount Rushmore engraving in this section this year. But Mike Evans, three for twenty nine. I mean, mul multiple interceptions thrown to yeah. Mike Evans, like uh, by the same cornerback. They are going to have to cut these pants off. <laughs> There's no way that he can take them uh, off get at the this jaws point of life. in the season. The jaws of life will be necessary to get the, these pants are so full Wait, which, oh, of poop. Okay, that they, I got you. I was trying to figure yeah. out whether the, no, what no, these like, were the big the, boy the, pants or so, what. No, they're just so full. Of the pressure and the uh, the uh, the band at the top. You can't get it off. You can't stretch it because it's too stretched. You don't think that thing could explode in, in, oh, yeah. against Carolina for a big game? <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> all over Carolina? All, uh, no. I, all I know is you, you hit that thing with like a needle. You just you could do a little pinprick on those pants. Kaboom. You better be wearing a, like a, an H, a hazmat suit. Well, we had the Juju Smith-Schuster game, three for 27. Ho-hum. <laughs> No performances uh, as disappointing as the weather game. Kirk, Jones, Wilson, Davis Moore on Thursday night. Yep. Traylon Burks, just two targets. Um, wow. Yeah. Don't I mean don't do it. Yep. Malik Willis, don't play his pass catchers. And DeAndre Johnson is accomplishing something that I am very impressed with, which is Extremely. Which is to be out there every single week, no matter what, get five, six, seven targets, and always be around five for sixty with no touchdowns. Five, so, six, seven targets, you say. He is averaging 8.7 targets a game. <laughs> this dude is getting elite target numbers. He's already at 130 targets on the season. You wouldn't know it at all. Yeah, because uh, DeAndre Hopkins wrote a book, and it's called Not All Targets Are the Same. And it was co-authored by Trace McSorley, and it sold no copies. <laughs> I mean, he's still catching passes, too. So He's got 82 receptions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But he's he's doing the Pittman. Yeah, he does yeah, not oh, have yeah. a no but, touchdowns on the season. Who's got the lowest yards, lo lower yards per catch, Pittman or Deontay Johnson? It's got to be Pittman. I bet it's close. Uh, but if uh, Deontay's at nine point nine, but check this out. Oh, okay, never mind. It's Pittman. <laughs> oh yeah, by I would think a lot. But the his catch percentage is identical to last year. So like the tar he's catching targets. I feel at like the he's, same clip. Yeah, but you're not. You, no sustained drives. No touchdowns. No wins. No Big Ben. He misses him. Uh, and then, hey, guys, I've got to stop starting Baltimore tight ends in my DFS because yep. I have lost two DFS showdowns on drop touchdowns. Isaiah likely dropped a touchdown in this one. Would have uh, helped. And then Mark Andrews, three for 45. He's ending his season um, in a very, very painful way for fantasy managers. I mean, this is 2.7 fantasy points, irrelevance. 4.6 fantasy points, 6 fantasy points, complete irrelevance. If you don't have Lamar Jackson, it's, it's. I mean, it's so bad. Amazingly, still tied in four on the season. And that is with an eight-game stretch with, he would be on pace for 50 for 600 and zero. Mm. Not mm. good. Feels bad. No Lamar, no Mark. I mean, is that what are you, we prescribing for weeks? Uh, you, Lamar Jackson could be back this week. What if he's not? Is Mark Andrews? Are you looking for a better option? Or are you just going to ride this right into the sun? I'm, like, it's hard because there oh, there man. aren't. I mean, the reality is there aren't better tight ends on the waiver wire. Right. You know, look at it. I think Njoku would be an example of one that you could you could look at with. Last week was weather. Do you disagree? No, I mean uh, you. You can absolutely look that direction, but uh, I mean Deshaun Watson's not inspiring me either. As absurd and disgusting as it is, you know, Tyler Higby. Say it. Say it. Tyler Higby. Say as it. you just said, now with with, with Baker, <laughs> with no Ben Skronik, he's like the last man up. You know he's going to have. Or you you think based on what we saw this last like, week he gets and, the, to play and the Chargers and the other receiving options that there aren't any he's would, probably gonna have five receptions I'd consider it oh gross I don't know if I could do it yeah but gross is winning right now yeah well this week yeah but I mean that that's the name of the game I mean I was I was <clears throat> pretty darn close to Isaiah Hodgins over Raheem Mostert this week in Dynasty and had I had the had the courage to make the gross play of a name that's not familiar right. and out there who had a big week. I mean, Isaiah Hodgins, he, did. he didn't show up in the studs. He should have. 
I mean, Isaiah Hodgins is progressively being more and more involved. Had the touchdown, more targets than Slayton, more involvement than Slayton, safer targets than Slayton, right? The ones that Hodgins is catching are ones that are, you know, higher probability catches. Like Slayton can pop off for a couple big touchdowns, but if he does not do that, it's more difficult to put production out there. So, look, I'm willing to get disgusted okay. if I need to. And I, you know I would. I'd rather... Yes, I'd rather, I can't believe you're even saying I'd rather these things right now. Be deceased and play Tyler Higby <laughs> most weeks, but it's about opportunity, and they don't have other wideouts. They're gone. Tutu Outwell is the size of a thimble. So, screen game with Tyler Higby, they figured something out. They scored 51 points against the Denver Broncos defense. Madness. This was just unbelievable. So, uh. Dalton Schultz, three for 43. It's been tough. Uh, and then Cole Komet, five for 27. He's really dependent on a healthy Justin Fields mm -hmm. and, and a touchdown. And not 30-mile-an-hour wins. Sure. Yeah. Well, look, we'll see what the weather's like for next week. But thank you for hanging out with us today. Hopefully you had a wonderful yeah. Christmas day. Uh, got to enjoy yourself. Got to be had it, have it amplified by a win. Or uh, have Christmas Day distract you from your losses. And we, uh, we're we looking forward to diving into Championship Week with all of you. And then, of course, we'll be reflecting on the season, looking at the truth of each and every player at every position. Uh, it'll be UDK season before you know it. So uh, I don't think there's anything else unless Brooks has something for us. You got anything, Brooksy? No, sir. All right. Well, then I will say goodbye to the Foot Clan. And we'll say hello tomorrow. Yeah, big waiver show tomorrow, everybody. We will see you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.